be seated if you can. May God bless all of you. This morning, I hope that uh, I can share some uh, with you that will be a blessing from God's word. Amen. Amen. We live in some some challenging times right now, and there are all manner of uh, religions and persuasions, all manner of uh, philosophy out there. How many of you know that the only thing that's going to save man is Jesus? Amen. The only thing that's going to change a man is God's Word. Amen. How many of you know that He and His Word are inseparable? Amen. So we have to obey God. God is good. Amen? Amen. This morning I want to talk a little bit about Santeria. I know that uh, there are a number of, thank you honey, I know that there are a number of people that uh, uh, may consider this subject to be a little off, off course, off center, but I, I can assure you that uh, somewhere along the line, you or your parents or your grandparents or your friends or somebody you know or had communion with, had fellowship with, in and out of the cross, uh, practice this, whether they practice it covert or overt. And, uh, and there are some major repercussions to uh, uh, the religion of Santeria. So today we want to talk about Santeria, which is also referred to as uh, law of religion, uh, Rega o Ocho, or uh, Lorega Lukumi. And Lukumi is spelled two different ways with a C I R K I. The first church of Lukumi was, was established in Miami in the 1990s. I was aware of when they first established because I was beginning to write on their book. The Santeria is a very old religion, which you may find being practiced all over the United States of America and in uh, many places in the world. And I might add, in uh, many places in our communities, locally as well. And I will uh, uh, give maybe some personal testimonies I knew about before I was even saved. Uh, what about the, the, the origin of this Santeria? Well, when the African slaves were brought to America, to the Americas, to the Caribbean, and many other countries, they brought their language and they brought their religion as well. Some refer to the slaves' religion as witchcraft or voodoo because of the origin of their faith. Santeria is a, is a derivative of the African Nigerian Orisha worship. So some of you will be able to refer to the book that I wrote on the Orishas. The book was, was uh, authored by the Holy Spirit to emphasize about praise and worship and the counterfeits they are. It was not uh, solely designed in order to inform you of demonic uh, uh, deities working uh, throughout the world in different religions. Uh, there is a part, not a part two to the book, but there is another book that I'm starting to write that will deal with the specifics of those different uh, religions. I don't know how long that's going to take. I didn't even know I was going to have to write it until I think yesterday. Um, Santeria is widely practiced in Puerto Rico, uh, in Brazil. Uh, by the way, if you should look at the map, of, if you put the map on your computer, see how big Brazil is. Sometimes we think America is big. Brazil is one of the biggest nations in the world. Uh, Santa uh, Domingo, uh, it's all practiced all across uh, Mexico, South America, uh, all throughout the Caribbean. When we, when we go overseas, there's big pictures and um, statues, uh, just wide open. It is very open there. Uh, and Cuba, is, it is the main religion of Cuba, uh, with the exception of the Christian religion, which uh, we have... I can say we share a part of that because the Goldens, who are going on to be with the Lord now, uh, were at various mill in the 60s and 70s and 80s uh, evangelizing Cuba, and those works are still going forward today. I had the privilege of knowing the Goldens, the husband and wife personally, in the early years in, in Arkansas. The um, uh, Cuba, uh, Haiti, the uh, uh, religion of Santeria, and you'll find the forest lands uh, synonymous, uh, whether it be uh, Santeria or it'd be voodoo, it's all the same. It came, all, it came from the same natives. It came from the same people. And I'll explain how it changed names in a few minutes. And all over the United States, there are people that are uh, practicing Santeria. The African, as I might add, had no choice of their own. Uh, they were enslaved as a commodity, a product. Uh, human labor was very important and was sent to many nations. That was the original uh, uh, slaves that came here with indigenous service, in other words, they were to work. Then after that, there were some problems in, in the, in the, uh, in the uh, uh, nations abroad. 
and uh, they needed uh, workers, so they began to uh, work with the Arabs. The Arabs were the first known people that I know of from my history studies. You're not going to find a lot of history in America about it. You have to go to France. That were the enslavers. And then you can go to biblical times, you can see that too. And so and then there were slaves in Hebrew. Okay, so you can go back and find way back. Slaves was a very normal, common commodity, but Africa didn't know anything about it. And to the, uh, to, to the uh, uh, Arab, uh, Arabs, uh, showed them how to do it. And so then they began slaving their own people to sell them off for products, maybe coffee, tobacco, I don't know what they wanted, but you have to go back and research all that. And you very, can find very little from the books in America. They had no interest in what, know what happened in Africa. You had to go to France or somewhere. Um, many of these slaves, they married the native peoples of the islands where they were taken to. So they were taken to Cuba or taken to Mexico. All right? And uh, so they, they mixed it up with the people there in their marriage, and then they mixed it up passing on their religion. Their religion was much stronger than the religion of most of the native lands that were occupied by Indians or Mexicans and stuff like that that had very little intellect when it came to faith <clears throat> at that time. We're talking about over 400 years ago, people. All right? And in places such as Cuba, uh, Mexico, and other countries, these marriages produced a religion called Santeria. In America, for instance, many were forbidden to practice their religion openly. I'm talking about when the slaves came over here. All right? The African slaves, like other religions and other religious people, used their religions to ask for their gods when they needed help, when they needed uh, healing, and when they needed freedom from different things that were going on in their life, they called upon their gods. And why shouldn't they? That's what they believed in. All right? and later, and, um, in countries where the Catholics were prominent, and there was Catholicism, was the main religion, uh, the, the priests, because of the beckoning of the African people, beckoning of the African priests, allowed them to practice their religion if they promised to become Catholics. I think we kind of heard that cliche before. Uh, in the movies, in documentaries, this is the way the Catholics operated at that time. Uh, I don't know about at this point, I'm not doing any research on present day Catholicism and how they are evangelizing. Uh, and so as long as they promise to be Catholics, they can go and worship their gods. So how was they able to do that? Uh, that is why you will see and, and find many Catholic symbols represented in this religion. Now in America as well, the slaves were not permitted to have their own religion. Uh, uh, and so they uh, not only hid it behind those that were Catholics, they also had Protestants. Remember that was a Protestant and a Catholic who were both in our nation and overseas. Uh, so the, the same thing happened with the, in the Protestant faith. Now I'm talking about Baptist methods, fundamental doctrines, all right? And others doing this same, same period, and the Orisha was able to manifest, because that's the, the gods that they serve in Santa Maria, the Orishas, same one in the book over there, all right? And um, they were able to manifest in some of the mainline churches and the churches that we see today with a lot of praise and worship, with false gifts, false baptism of the Holy Ghost, and um, uh, many other... Uh, false uh, uh, manifestations, false baptism, false praise and worship, and uh, uh, because they were showing up anywhere the Orishas were allowed to show up, these Catholic uh, or these Protestant uh, slaves were able to mask their faith behind the doctrines of men. It's so unfortunate. For instance, the, the Catholic saints, St. Peter, St. Paul, John the Baptist, uh, and James, St. James is, is the name of that god is called Ogun, O-G-G-U-N, from the Santeria spelling, from, from the Nigerian spelling, and the American interpretation is O-G-U-N, Ogun. Uh, and Ogun, you can find him a lot if you want to. Dave Matthews Band, Santana Music, all you got to do is put it up on the internet and say, give me the names of the lyrics that sung in these songs. And you say, oh my God, they're worshiping the ownership. So we have to be careful what's coming in our house, especially if we believe jazz is okay, Oh, we believe some soft music is okay. Well, I believe peace is okay. You can cut it all off. If God gave me praise and worship music to have, fine. But I can be in perfect peace with, without it. Because the praise is inside me. You know? And there might be times when I need to have song and worship. We need that. You know, right? But we need to be content in all things. Think about the brother or sister who spent, I think there was a guy in China, China or North Korea, spent with, uh, several years in prison in a box. I mean, in a box like this. And Dr. No told us about that story when the, when the uh, North Korean or China whoever it was back then. This, this story was told to me in the early 2000s, and when he came out. And, uh, and so what, what are you going to tell a person like that? 
All right, that's all they had was put in, and they had a few scriptures inside of them, and they lived all their lives and never re, re, never recanted, never redact the word. It's a big powerful, powerful term today in our political, political reader. Nothing was redacted. He lived the life. Amen. There are many others that have done so as well. The God being worshipped during the Catholic Mass was their God of iron and machines. Oh God. Uh, he's a, considered to be a warrior God, master tool maker, architect of the civilization. Wow. Ogon is an African Orisha deity, of which I shall cover more later in this teaching. Once again, you're starting to see that we're talking about a, a, a religion that's primarily, as far as most people think, and I mean think, Hispanic, and that is not true. Nothing can be further from the truth. I learned about a lot of the things that they were doing from people right here in Port Arthur, Texas, and merchant seamen and stuff telling me, don't let nobody shake your hand a certain way. I didn't even know what was going on. I wasn't a Christian. I just had a street, street savvy. All right, if you're going to be out there and you're going to sell the dope, then you ought to know the territory. All right, so I had people that was helping back there. And, but I didn't know about the spirits. I just knew what not to do, who not to shake, what not to do. All right, so these things were not taught to me by my <coughs> brother and that was his man. And these people are still probably around here, still living. All right. Even though Santeria, I'm kind of mixing up. I know that some of you wanted to get the, the teaching on this. I have to mix it up because it is not exclusive to the Hispanic people, and that's not what we're saying here today in this teaching. Even though Santeria is strongly practiced among Hispanics and blacks, uh, there are many people of all races, cultures, social standings. Excuse me, I don't like to lick fingers. I see that at the store. Isn't that hard for you to grab the bag? I know y'all be rebuking, huh? Uh, that practice Santeria. Uh, the Orisha, uh, which is the gods that they're worshiping in the Santeria ritual, are, are also called spirit guides. Come Holy Spirit. We want the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us, not some false deity. Amen? Uh, the Orisha, as you know from reading the book on the Orisha, Af African hidden gods of worship, their hidden gods are Orisha. The Orishas are sometimes uh, are so-called emissaries, spirit guides. And their, uh, their, their God, uh, like the Muslims got, they call their God Allah, and our God is Yahshua, Yom Shia, our God is Yahweh, our God is Yahweh Father. Okay, Father God, okay? We have, we have uh, a different God than the Muslims, <laughs> and that the, those that are practicing Santa Maria, we need to make sure to draw a clear distinction that that is not the God that we're serving here. Amen? So the, their name of their God is Odal Damar, O L. O L O D U M A R E. <laughs> uh, and uh, these are riches being worshipped by the practitioners of Santeria are believed to be the rulers over and over the forces of nature and the endeavors and the effects on humanity. So as you can imagine, this is, you know, the Bible teaches us that the Lord had prepared his throne in heavens, in the heavens that his kingdom ruled all over. So it's just the opposite of what the word says. They're trying to take the place of our God, and that's a lying spirit, people. And so Psalms 103, verse 19 makes it very clear that the Bible teaches that the Lord had prepared his throne in the heavens. And his kingdom ruled it all over. When you do a, we don't have time to go into a lot of detail, but uh, when you do a, a study on, on heavens, I think you, you will find that in the scriptures that the, the heavens also refer to, to you and I. See, so God is doing the work. Paul talked about going up to the third heaven. I think many of you agreed about that. And... Um, the uh, in Revelation the 12 chapter verse 12 I'll just I'll just bring it in so we can kind of ask God to broaden our understanding about things sometimes we, get, we, we understand things uh, literal but we don't have symbolic meaning so sometimes we have symbolic meaning but we don't know the literal meaning All right, so some things that we'll see we're not sure what it means because we just assume that's what it means because there I seen it that's what it is and it doesn't always mean that a woman in the church can speak to the man child what's a man child how does that have to do with a woman <laughs> All right, so you need to understand what, you know, especially in Revelation, what the implication really is when we're hearing from God. In Revelation 12, 12, it says, Therefore rejoice, you heavens. He's not just talking to the air up there, uh, things flying around, clouds and moon. We are pictured as the heavens in, in the Lord, all right? And ye that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for, for the uh, devil has come down upon, up unto you, having great wrath because he knew that he had but a short time. So he's, God is talking to us here re, uh, to, to rejoice because we dwell here. But, but the, the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, the devil has come down unto you, you and I. 
Alright? So God doesn't want us walking in the carnal realm. The first heaven is the carnal realm. So God wants us to walk in the spiritual realm. So oh you heavens, you've got to get some word in you. Because the devil's come down unto us. Alright, so we have to understand the spiritual significance of what God is saying. If God's covering is is his garment. And he covers us with his word and his spirit. So we can see the garment of God in, in verse 14 and to the woman. Now here's woman, but it don't mean that it's actual woman. So you have to be careful when you're looking at Revelation, when you're trying to find something, you know, to, to agree, you know, you have to be very cautious with that. Now uh, here the woman is, is, the, is the church. All right? And we are the bride of Christ. And, and the woman is given the word and the spirit. We got the power in the last days. The word and the wings, both of the wings, the wings speak of word and spirit. All right, that's God working in his heavens, in his church in the last days. So I kind of got a little bit away from where we need to be, but the Holy Spirit is, is orchestrating what he wants to have done. So, oh, you have us don't walk in the carnal realm, walk in the spirit realm. Don't walk in the carnal realm because we have God's word. He's given us uh, the two wings, the word and the spirit. All right, and we shall prevail. And we shall, the man child shall come forward to cheat the church in, in these last days with power and victories. Now, back to the, the original deities and their relationship <coughs> to the Santeria religion, these deities being worshipped by the followers of the Santeria faith are demons. All right, and Satan. And during the original uh, ceremony, which that's included in the original book, they manifest themselves with prophecy. And most of the times, if they're not pleased with the food offerings, they'll let you know that. All right? And so they do everything they can with the song and the dance and the drumming and everything to please those originals, originals because they're coming down and they are going to handle the endeavors and the future of our land and our sons and our daughters and our crops. These are masquerading demons. And they prophesy. And that's, that's a lot of prophecy right now going forward in the charismatic churches, Hispanic, uh, Western churches, uh, Caribbean churches. We, we got warnings down in, in St. Lucia and other places. There are a whole mass of people were coming in there from Africa with a lot of prophecy and a lot of stuff. They were destroying the churches in the, in the Caribbean. And, but God intervened. Amen? God intervened. And uh, he uses people to intervene. He uses us to go in there. Not us. There was other people that went behind us that went in there. And we're cleaning up that mess with the word of God. That's the only thing you clean up a mess. You can't take it personal. It's just God's business. All right? When people are messing up, going in there, it ain't personal. It's just God's business. So you have to be able to come, come in there and do the work that God's calling you to do. All right. Many in the Santa Real Faith attend drumming parties called the MV. Now I'm going to pronounce it. I'm going to call it by, from, from those from the Hispanic faith world, they were calling it the EMBE. But the Westerners and the Nigerians call it a BMB. So you'll find in my book, I, I spell it B-E-M-B-E, -E, Bimbi, because it is an actual Bimbi uh, a party when you go to a drumming party. On the other hand, many American practitioners have been westernized, and I'm talking about practitioners who are doing it under the table. Some of them are coming out now because we're in a different season now. Uh, with the last presidency, the last eight years, and going into this new presidency where the emphasis is on liberty and freedom in our faith, and that's what it should be, all right? People are coming out of the closet. All right, so you'll see animal sacrifice sometime in the front yard. <laughs> Nobody can tell you nothing. As long as they do the Section 501C3 and their legal church, they can kill a cat, kill a, kill a lamb. It's sad, but that's where we at. Let's be honest about it. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You've seen, you've seen this uh, before. All right, and so, so in the westernized uh, uh, group that has moved on over the years, uh, you'll find that they have omitted many of the uh, drumming uh, because it draws too much attention by the neighbors. What are they doing over there? <laughs> anybody get? <laughs> but anyway, uh, so anyway, so and so, so they're not really doing a lot of drumming unless you live in a community where everybody knows what you're doing. <laughs> so because they've become westernized, and if you read the book on drumming, then you realize what they've done now. They got they had the Fortune 500 companies. They had meetings right now. They're up here going, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And, and they, and they think it ain't, ain't nobody mentioned the word Santa Real, nobody mentioned that. They just called it, talking about mood, sensitization, becoming a touch with your inner self. They don't even mention this. The drummer came from Nigeria. Uh, oh, about ba Luke there, whatever his name is written in my book. He the one brought it in the first man. All right, first one to sanctify. They called him the godfather of the drummer. He's dead now. And, um, 
And so, uh, because of the westernization of many of the uh, practitioners of Santa Maria, the drumming has been omitted, but drumming is still a very important tool in their daily lives. What is actually drumming, to call up their original gods, or just listening to Latin music in their car radios at home all day, or just synchronizing the rap music and the beats and the rhythm and the rap music, and much more. Uh, as long as they have their beat, the demons are happy, they're worshiping the demons. And so, so some people say uh, certain people are more charismatic, have more rhythm. I, I don't know more rhythm people uh, than, uh, well, I'll just do that alone. Anyway, so, so the Hispanic, the Caribbean, the, uh, the Afro-American, and the Westernization, it's all about the same now we're dealing with the same devil. Now, Thirty years ago, you could say that was identifying different. I mean, you got people now that they're spinning around. Y'all see it? I have not watched American Idol this year, but I'm certain that some people have. <laughs> all right, the um, those that often attend these drumming parties, they only are there for to worship the original spirits. Most of them know. Everyone is not ignorant. They know what's going to go on when they go into a drumming party. Uh, maybe some of you have been invited to a drumming party under the skies and we just want to touch with our inner self or get close to God. But Psalms, the ninth chapter of Psalms, verse 2, the word of God says, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. We are to worship God, all right? As Carolyn so uh, alluded to in her, in her sharing with us today, uh, and, uh, and I might say there was a preparation there uh, for, for some things that... Uh, uh, are, are, are coming forward, so be prepared. You know, with God, give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name, and worship the Lord in, in the beauty of holiness. And we as a church should be prepared for all things in all seasons, uh, but only the blessings of the Lord uh, flow from those that are his. Amen? Perhaps many in this religion may think that they are worshiping the God of the Bible, but they have been deceived by the deceiver, whose name is Satan, the Oblos, the old evil one, the imp, um, Lucifer, you know, name change and as we move forward, that's another teaching in itself. Um, but we know it's a fallen uh, angel. All right? The one that was in charge of praise and worship and, and glorifying God, he decided to do one thing. When he was supposed to be praising the Lord, he started drawing it to himself. Ta -ta -ba -ta, ba -boom -ba -ta. It's all about me. And so Satan, that's, that's what his fall was about. He was created to worship God and he started drawing it to himself. All right, that was the main issue there. The angel liked it, all right? And so other practitioners know very well what they're doing when they go to a, uh, uh, to a bimbi party or MB party. They know exactly what they're doing because this is their religion, and that's their belief. Just not everybody is there. It's like you invited people to, say, uh, a gospel church meeting on Sunday morning, and you know that we deliver this meeting too, all right, because God is our deliverer, right? You don't always tell them, come on in, because you'll get your demons out, right? <laughs> Most people wouldn't even show up. <laughs> so, what's wrong with this guy? What's wrong with this lady? You know? <laughs> so, many Christians today are suffering, and this is what we want to get to the top of the road. Many Christians, uh, no matter where you're from, uh, today are suffering demonic attacks because they've been given L keys. Okay. An L key, um, y'all, excuse me, everything I had is missing up here. We have so many papers up here. Let's see if I can find anything. I might have moved it myself. All right, everybody that came up here, check to see if you took any papers with you. Oh, I see them over there. Okay. I know we're going to find some later. Uh, young man, young fella, need some help. I ain't pass it out, and you can drop too. I'm, I'm uh, passing out some um, some pictures of the various, some simplified uh, items that many times find their way into Christian homes and that bring curses. I'm focusing on the first one, which is the elikies, and the the elikies are um, a beads. And we do, we just take everything for granted, especially during Mardi Gras season. And we have a lot of people, beads have become very popular because now you know, they're all in our teeth and all around our necks. They still change that we pray in the church every Sunday to be broken. 
and yet we, we load up two, two pounds worth of chains around our neck and we walk out the day on Sunday night. <laughs> Monday morning we ran them chains. We all weighted down. All, some, all demon got to do is grab you by the neck and choke you while you're trying to cast out a demon. Mm. Pastor Dean taught us a long time ago when you minister, take off your tie they'll grab you and put your head down. <laughs> <laughs> a little humor there, but and, uh, I'm not saying all chains are uh, 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 elegies. Uh, build a uh, uh, beaded necklaces because they're not. Uh, but what is the implication? What would I need a chain around my neck for when I'm supposed to be yoked with God? Mm. Amen. And um, so anyway, many Christians today are suffering demonic attacks because they have been given the other keys by loved ones, uh, by family members, by lovers or intended lovers, and even ministers who profess to be gospel preachers. It's just cute. We were down in Mexico. I just brought you some. I brought one for the whole congregation. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm trying to, I'm doing something. I don't know what the devil's trying to do. I mean, I can't just assume all of them are interested in sex. But anyway, so anyway, I can't, you can't assume that. Some of them are, right now, uh, money is, is the big thing now. It's just a desperation for money right now. And in the last days, that's spoken about too. Uh, greed and greedy and covetousness. So we can't ignore that uh, as far as the last days are concerned. All right, so what are elikis? I think they've probably got some writing there on your paper. These are bearded, uh, beaded necklaces that represent the Orisha spirits, uh, demons. When you receive your elikis, it is the first step or passage into the Santeria religion. Whether you are practicing it or not, you are now part of a cult. Now you need to understand what I'm saying. When you receive it, people give gifts. They don't always give an introduction, uh, a communion, uh, why you're receiving this gift. They just say, here, take this, baby. Uh, here, Pat, grandma passes down, great grandma passes down, you disappear y'all, lock it up in the safe or whatever, you know. So you need to understand what I'm talking about. You don't have to be indoctrinated with a philosophy while you receive them. You just got it. That's all it takes. It's just like me, if, if I wasn't saved, all right, and I give you an occult item, then the Bible, according to the Bible, uh, Deuteronomy the seventh chapter, verse 25, 26, it says, when you find the occult item, it says, destroy it. And it says in, in uh, in Numbers 33, 55, I think, and 56, if you fail to do that, then the curse is upon us should come upon you. So the enemy managed to put things in the house uh, or in our homes. And some of us, we, we have, uh, trust me, I know about arrogance. I was about arrogant you can get before God came in my life, and he's still working on that. And um, the, uh, uh, we, have, we have an attitude about, well, not me, not so. Right? Deliverance is not for the not me, and not so. Deliverance for the desperate. And they want it all. And so your gift here, the Eliki beads, represent a tearing away from your old life and walking in a, in a way of the Orisha, where the Orisha spirits is now leading you. In other words, you're being led by Odalamar, supposed to be the god of the world, the god of civilization. All right? And, and this begins as soon as you receive or accept this simple looking deeds. As soon as you get And people, people, you're not even ready to hear about Santeria beads or African voodoo beads. If you still got your, what's that thing on the wall? The witch, I mean, the dream catchers? If you hadn't figured out the revelation of dream catchers, you're not even rid of this. So, so many people in the church right now, and in their homes, because the children make dream catchers at school, and they think it's okay, and they hang it up on their wall, because my granddaughter, my grandson made a dream catcher. And a dream catcher simply say that I will protect you from evil dreams and from evil spirits. No dream catcher can do that. There is only one man I know can. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. So you bring a counterfeit and you confirm that with your children. And children are so resilient. You can tell them things and if they're of age, then they will work, grow with you. They love to bring, burn something on the fire. Then you have to explain to them. You can't go back and tell your, your students this because they may not understand. Then they're so resilient that after about a week, you can go in there and remove it and put a nice picture up there of somebody they like and they will never say anything. We are afraid to do those things. We're afraid to offend. All right? but I don't call, no, cut no strings. I, I, I ask God for wisdom how to deal with each situation. How to deal with each situation. I've got gifts from children. I mean, over the years, I smashed my brother. They don't know what they <laughs> <laughs> Pulverized. <laughs> ain't lost no love in them. But I ain't go back and tell them. I bust them things up. Right? <laughs> Until they change, you know. Until they grew up and change, you know, change and stuff like that. All right, the owners of these beads are now under the spiritual care of the godmothers or the godfathers Orisha spiritual guides. And you know from the book we wrote on Orisha that uh, the Orishas are simply ancestral deities, deities. Okay, gods and the fathers and godfathers and godmothers and so forth. 
So that whoever gets these bees, whoever owns them, whoever locks them up in their safe, locks them up in their little uh, thing where they keep that, uh, that first uh, prayer cloth or whatever thing you got in there. Uh, some people got all kinds of stuff in there, jewelry, and, uh, uh, hope you ain't got no Indian heads and stuff like that. But anyway, people have all kinds of stuff in their safe they keep because my papa gave me this, my grandma gave me this, right? But, you know. but anyway, so you have to look and see if, if these beads or these items I'm going to talk about today is coming to your possession. And you just carefully put them away because it didn't mean anything to you. They probably didn't and they shouldn't. All right? But the devil is no respect to persons. You just give him a door, he's coming. He may take 30 years to show up. We just expect everything that must be bad must mean I'm going to feel in my spirit, hallelujah. I can tell something ain't right here. Now the devil's smart. He let you stay cool, calm, and collected. Go on for about 30 years and bust hell wide open or leave you in a hard way. So we got to be proactive, not reactive. We got to be fighting to take back what the devil stole from us. When we say from us, we're talking about all humanity because Jesus went to the cross for all humanity. Amen. So we're not only just fighting for us, we fight for our family, for everybody. The most precious and most important person to me is a person that's lost. If the, if the most precious and important person to you is the person that's found, then you need to reevaluate your, your call. All right. And so, um, the owners of these beads are now under the spiritual care of their godfathers or the uh, or godmothers or ritual spirit guys. And that's right. Or ritual worship is the ancestral worship forbidden by scriptures, by the way. And it, Second Kings is, a, is a pretty much a highlight about the hands. And, uh, and there are other scriptures that deal with this in 2 Kings 22, 17. And those of you who begin the YouTube or the, the, the video or the CD can go back and reference the scripture, 2 Kings 22, 17. It says, because they have forgotten or forsaken me, they have burned incense unto other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all of the works of their hands. And we're talking about hands here, the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. And so they make these elegies with their hands to worship the Orisha. And I think on the book that, that back there on uh, uh, canceling witchcraft prayers, canceling psychic prayers, there's a picture of an actual Orisha uh, 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 group there. I forgot what they call it. It's an altar. It's an altar. All right. It's an actual Orisha altar there. And you'll see different statues, uh, supposed to be Mary and Peter and all that there, and candles and fruit at the front, a food offering and beads. You'll see that on the little, the little book back there. All right, so I didn't make a picture that we already have that. All right, and so you, you need to be very uh, cautious about this because um, uh, God, is, God is very uh, clear in his word on, uh, on about beads and, and things like that. You go, and candles, if you go back and do a study on candles, you'll be very careful about it. Uh, the type of candles you bring in your house. In Matthew, the 11th chapter, verse 28, this is what we're supposed to have around our neck. The Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11, 29, Take my yoke upon you for, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And so people, uh, this is what God wants to see around our, our neck. And we see, as I mentioned on Friday night during our healing service, uh, uh, this past Friday, that if we can see as angels see, as God sees it, we'll see that some people have more yokes than the yoke of God. And God wants us to, uh, to remove those yokes off of us. Alright? And uh, all the yokes that are not supposed to be there, they need to be removed from, our, from around us. Not just our necks, the implication is they are being driven in directions contrary to the word of God. Our yokes were designed to bring, to put the oxen to go in the direction that the, the proprietor or the owner was sending that oxen. But God gave us another uh, understanding about the oxen and the yoke that we can be led by the Spirit when He sent the oxen down without a yoke around Him with the tabernacle of God when it was removed from its place to the place that God wanted to go. With. He just said, "Let it go," and the oxen just took the tabernacle of God, the holy place where God wanted it to go. So we can be led by the yoke of God. That's a powerful thing. Most people can't do that. I mean, they got to have this, got to have that. There's always a catch to or something. Man, just, just love God, you know. You, you need to know that you love God, that God loves you, and that you obey the word. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Some people have been affected by love portions. Ah, 
oh, you say it doesn't work, you can go to the store and buy some of this stuff. I remember back in the, in the early, in the 1900s, the nerd candy came out. For some reason, that's the only thing I got back that is missing. I got stuff to go back there. I got Christmas trees, I got dolls, I got kicking that nasty looking cabbage patch with my head all mashed in. Can't imagine if I want to keep that down. But anyway, and so I got all that in storage back there, but I can't find my nerd candy. Somebody that devil got rid of that one. Because on the nerd candy, when they was giving it to the children on the box, they had a place where you can lay your hands on another child's head, and guess what they think? It was on the count, on the box of nerds. On the candy. That devil got that out of you. <laughs> Somebody got that box, thought they had candy, and got some other child up there and it. <laughs> but that's okay. We still know what they had on, on the box. And so that was way back in the 1900s. Tell what they think. Well, so let's talk about love portions. Yes, there are practitioners of Santa Maria. When I'm saying Santa Maria, I'm talking about voodoo too, but they the same. There's, there's really no difference, okay? It's just that uh, one is more privileged to one people, one, another group of people, but it doesn't really matter anymore at this point. Because uh, everybody, is all, I mean, we all, uh, what they call it, uh, multiplied in colors. I mean, you know, we all, it's lots of, uh, like it should be, uh, mixed up there. Praise the Lord in one spirit. Amen? Amen. All right, so, so yes, the, there are practitioners of Santa Rita sometimes uh, for personal gain, uh, personal lust, or uh, trying to help out a friend, or uh, paying customer, or place a, a love portion curse on someone. All right, and uh, it's all done, and it's done all the time. Uh, they, uh, one of the most simple things that we've seen is the Santa Rita. These are, they say, Catholic items in the, in the stores, the market basket stores and some other stores. No disrespect, the market basket got the best beef in town, no problem. Uh -huh. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to be dealing with the labor laws later. Uh, but anyway, so but anyway, on their shelves is those little cattle. Uh, supposed to be cattle, but they ain't cattle. If you really pay attention, they are actually Santa Real candles. And we want to put them in the yard because the yellow would say how to get a man. And the red would say how to get money. And the blue would say how to get rid of your enemy. All right, so we'll buy that because we like the fragrance. Liar, liar, pants on fire. You're buying it because you're trying to impress God. You're trying to move past the Holy Spirit. you got to play it. And that can of, that other can is supposed to be a blessing with this foul smell that's supposed to smell your house good with an Indian cheap head on it. How in the world could you bring that in your house? You're supposed to, Jesus is supposed to be the chief apostle. We don't need no Indian chief in our house. Talk about it smell good. All right, tell the truth, Sammy, that we can set free. We need to clean the stuff out of our house. The church is full of this mess. We don't know why pastors are falling and, and, uh, and, and congregation people are backsliding. This stuff then crept into their house and they don't know what to do with it. So love portions are done all the time. Uh, Shango, which is the god of uh, Cuba, uh, spelled two ways, C-H-A-N-G-O or S-H-A-N-G-O, Shango. In my book, it's going to be spelled both ways, uh, which is called the Catholic St. Barbara. Spirit is the most popular of the Orishas, popular in the Caribbean, popular in the Western culture. Shango rules over lightning, thunder, fire, the drums, and the dance. So you can see why it's the most popular. And, and uh, Santana makes a big hit about Shango and Black Magic Woman, and because he places a great emphasis on dance and and drums. And that's wonderful dance. I think uh, uh, one of the one, one of the most beautiful things I saw in dance in the. Uh, uh, 90s, I believe, was it? Correct me if I'm mistaken, honey, or anyone else. Uh, was when, um, and I can't think of this. James Robinson wife uh, was the first person I've seen dance in the spirit. And this is way, way back. Some of you might be familiar with James, James Robinson, his wife, and he fell from grace, and God brought him back. Thank God for that. And uh, uh, but I, I was that was the first time I saw it. And it might be because that was my experience. You know, I was saved maybe three, four, five, seven, whatever years. It may have been going on before then. I know there were people dancing in the spirit, but that was the first time I saw it publicly. And I said, "That's beautiful." I mean, I mean, I mean, the description of the body and the way the body was gyrating wasn't the gyrate that would have produced lust or any type of inappropriate behavior. And I was touched by it, but I didn't turn it into a praise dance. <laughs> anyway, all right. So you gotta, you gotta know your place. So you can't just grab everything that's good and make it you. Yeah. That's the problem with church. Then, then after about six months, you, well, God showed me something else. But you up here testifying that God told me we're going to do this, we're going to do that. In six months, you can change. You better be careful with this. One day at a time. One day at a time. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. Amen? So Shango is a, 
uh, with the drums and dance, Shango is said to be strong-willed and high-blooded. He represents the love of food, the love of dance, the love of song, and guess this, and the love of women. That's the Shango demon. The Shango demon. And people, you have been deceived if you think that only Hispanics are into this. You're greatly deceived. For, for many blacks, many in the Caribbean, uh, we had one come in our house that looked, one open up his skirt, you know, but it was. Uh, the Brazilians, uh, there are Westerners and others who do this daily. And they, they uh, I knew about witchcraft and some people could control others when I lived in Port Arthur long before I became a Christian. Uh, my cousin was a merchant seaman. He traveled to the many, many nations. And he told me not to let certain people shake my hand a certain kind of way. And he taught me how to cook pig feet, pig ears, and all that kind of stuff. He was much older. He was a seasoned man. I was in my 20s. He was in probably the 50s or 60s. He was, he was cool. He said, man, I know you're out there. And he said, let me just tell you, don't do this, don't do that. They come at you this way, don't do that. And he just said, let me show you how to, don't let them shake your hand this way. Don't let them do this, whatever. And he was just showing me stuff like that. You know, you have to understand, I wasn't a Christian. And I was so arrogant and so full of pride and so macho, macho, you know, you can't do nothing. Gee, uh, that uh, I heard it, I received it. And didn't use it, you know, didn't pay any attention to it until somebody tried to do it. I remember scoring out of the streets by trust. Said, hey, you know, I caught that, you know. <laughs> you know, so it, it popped up when it needed to pop up. But I'm walking around with a, like, on a swag of the alien or something on my shoulder. Like, you know, like I, I'm looking to see if you're going to do me. I, I don't walk like that. Uh, I was like that, you know, probably with the dating. I was always fearful I was going to lose that date. <laughs> Anybody else bad with that? But anyway, uh, <laughs> that's not pretty rational. Y'all know what I'm talking about. All right. And, um, but uh, especially when you was the kind of person I was. And it was a control by demons. I know I had a lot of demons because when I came back from overseas, I realized I was really messed up. And then God, God came to my heart. Thank God for that. God, I mean, I was really messed up. And, um, and so there are people that, uh, especially in voodoo uh, and, um, and, uh, and the Santeria religion and uh, hoodoo and uh, many other uh, demonic uh, religions, they are people that know how to use love potions and candles. And that was a, a movie that came out. It's old. You can't, uh, it's hard to find. I couldn't find it on, on, on TV, la I mean, on my computer last night. But the name of it was called Santa Rear. And I forgot the name of the actor. I thought it was Michael Douglas, but I couldn't find any, anywhere in all of his movies that he played in that movie. So it's got to be someone else. And in the movie of Santa Rear, late 80s, uh, probably came out. Uh, the star is living in an apartment complex, and then someone lives in another apartment complex across the way. And his Hispanic uh, cleaning lady saw him looking out the window, gazing at this beautiful woman way across the road at another big apartment complex. And so she saw that he liked her, and so she worked up a portion and a spell and burned candles and put stuff on his bed. And then they just happened to connect in the street, and before they knew it, it was together at the end of the show. They, they highlight the lady and, the, and all the candles that she won't to brought together. Yeah. Yeah. And I, so I, I don't know what happened to my video. Probably when we had that storm, the hurricane, we lost the whole building back in the 206. We lost a lot of the tapes and stuff at Santa Maria, Serpent of the Rainbow. That's another teaching in itself, straight out of Haiti. So they for me, it was Serpent of the Rainbow, out of Haiti. We used those. We took segments out of that when we were teaching on Friday night. So I lost that. You know, because of the storm, but we're going to have to go back and download that some kind of way, get it on the CD so I can chop it up for certain teachings. Or you do the teachings. That's why you're here. I can't do it all. you got to be catching some of this and say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to study that, I'm going to research that. And when your hour comes, you're a teacher. You know? But if you have no preparation, then don't, don't expect to teach because the devil is going to want to elect a lot of unprepared people. And preparation is more than the gift. you got to also serve. you got to be found faithful amongst your peers because you, that's who judges you first. So if you don't do what you're supposed to do, Jesus said you should know that by their fruit. And fruit ain't always a false prophet. The fruit would be somebody that's lazy. Can't get out the bed. Like, what up? All right, but as soon as Sunday show up, they want to preach. Okay. Anyway, so we're going to break that love curse off that may have been placed on us. Because at school, you can go get a candle. And, and we, all right, the sororities, they do all kinds of stuff with Ouija boards and burn candles to get this man or that woman. You'd be surprised. That somebody might not have tried to put a fix on you somewhere in your life. And maybe it never affected you, but it might have caused high blood pressure. Not here, but I'm going to talk to the video. It may have caused something else because you're suppressing that. You're suppressing that. And it builds up pressure in you. You're not doing it. 
All these things, demonic oppression affects a believer until they get rid of the oppression. Amen? Amen. Just, it makes reasonable sense to anybody? You know what I'm saying? So why not, you know, why not? Do, this is what a hospital is. This is Jesus' word here, hospital word. Many Christians are suffering demonic attacks because they own a Madama dog. Not Madama. Uh, I meant Madonna. <laughs> you had that, you're in trouble too. <laughs> you don't know what you got there, man, woman, whatever. But anyway, Lord, save the Lord. Save the Lord. That's all we say, save us. You make a great witness. Paul was a great example. I was an example, but most of us are great about Paul. Because he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. And that's a great example. This man was killing the Christians. And God turned him around. And that's my prayer all the time for some of these high-profile people, whether they be ministers or they in the secular world, that God would turn them around and they would be great adversaries for God. All right, but the truth of it is, I call a spade a spade, so you don't want that in your house. You don't want Madonna in there, and you don't want uh, the, the Madama doll as well. Uh, it, it is a, a gift. Uh, uh, people try to give them as gifts to people, too. They try to pass them down. Uh, many times they're passed down from grandparents, or they could be a present. Uh, and, you know, you, you can come under a curse. You know, in, in Exodus, the, uh, the 20th chapter of Exodus, God laid it down. In the, in the commandments that were given to Moses to give to the people. And the, of course, the first com commandment is that thou shalt have no other God before him. So in Exodus, the 20th chapter, um, where God says in verse 2, I brought you out of the, the land of Egypt, which is the house of bondage, which that's that's where you were lost. You were in your flesh. You were lost. You was, he brought us out of that. We're saved now. All right, then he said, first thing, thou shalt have no other God before me. And no other God before me also mean I don't drive in the dark. I don't go to stores on the first month. There's too many people in there with their checks. You gotta find out where your guards are. You gotta find out what those other guards are that says, I will only witness on my time when I feel like it, at my convenience. So you have to overcome all these jokes. Because that's inappropriate. That don't mean you all of a sudden you become an evangelist on the first through the third. <laughs> but you gotta conquer that giant. Some people they conquer out of rejection. So they conquer the third, the first through the third, and the next thing you know, but God has sent me as an evangelist to the stores every month on the first or the third, and they do that, and they live a poor, miserable life as a Christian because they're under yoke, because God didn't say, I told you to do that every week or every month. So we make ministries out of things that are not ministries. We just need to be instant in season wherever we are. Something, the ministry to the loss is to the world. You can't dictate, I'm going to do it in an air-conditioned store on the first or the third. <laughs> you may have to go to the hottest part of Nigeria and eat grasshoppers and honey. Uh, tell the truth, boy. Come on, just tell the truth. I mean, I, this hurt now. I'm telling you, I mean, if we had about 2,000 people there, there'd be a lot of people throwing some stones up here. I, I, I know what all of those told me. Uh, and then God said, yeah, You're not supposed to, verse 4, make no uh, uh, graven images or any likes of anything that's in the heaven above or that's in the earth below. And that doll is some kind of image of some earth below, right? I don't know who it looked like, but it looked like. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're not even supposed to have that stuff under, under, uh, that's under the water you know, and I know the guy the Bible doesn't talk about all the images because they, when they built the tabernacle of Solomon and Moses, there were lions there and there were uh, 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 oxen and things like that but they were in a uh, uh, in a supported role and they were in, the implication referring to Jesus Christ uh, which is the ox that carry our load, uh, our birds uh, the the, 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 the uh, the lion, speaking of the uh, lion of Judah. All right, so they had symbolic meaning, so that don't mean you're going to get a collection of lions, because you can get away with it. Yes. Okay, so you got to have everything in moderation. Thou shalt not bow yourself down to them, or serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity, or transference of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation, then that hate me. But I will show mercy to those uh, to thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So, uh, the Madama doll. Uh, brings a fourth generation cursor. If you got one of those in your house, you will curse your children, curse your grandchildren, curse your great grandchildren, curse. All right. So if you got the other keys in your house, you will curse your children, curse your grandchildren, curse your great grandchildren, curse. If this stuff is serious. It brings a four generational curse. Just think how to exacerbate yourself. Mispronounced that word. Um, if, if it starts in the second or the third generation, then it, it, it starts over again. All right. You say, well, uh, great, 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 great grandpa, he gone. So I know it ain't on me. What's it? Right. Might have, caught, might have caught the third grand, great-grandpa and came back into your grandpa, to your dad, and jumped over him and got into you. All right, so it's always good to break these curses off of our lives. So even if you don't have one, uh, a Madonna a doll, uh, your family members may have had one. You may have one in their house right now. 
uh, the Madama doll is used for guidance and protection, forbidden by Scripture. And this guidance and protection is not from the God of the Bible. Uh, the, the God of the Bible clearly illustrates to us in Matthew, the uh, 28 chapter, where Jesus tells us in, in his commission to the church, Matthew 28, probably 18. Let's see here. Yes, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And God closes out with, Amen. All right? All right, so the Madonna doll is used for guidance and protection, but God says, I am your protection. I am your guidance. All right? And he tells us in Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give you power to trade for serpents and scorpions and of all the power of enemy, nothing by any means shall hurt or harm you. So he's, he said, I've given you the, the keys to the kingdom. I've given you the same power. So what do we need uh, a Madama doll for, for false gods? You say, well, I have one, but it don't look like that. Mine is red and green. Yeah, you got it because you're just saying, I got one, but it don't look like that. <laughs> you got to listen to what you say. Yeah. All right? And some people just start sticking pins in them. They don't know why they got uh, arthritis. Pain in their back. They didn't stab themselves. That Buddha demon name ain't have to call nobody else. He got you stabbing yourself. And we know this for a fact. I had one somebody here years ago, 20 years ago. And they came and said, We got, I don't know, I'm squeaking in our house and all kind of noise and all like that. And my wife got the word from the Lord and said, Do you have a, a little dog where you keep pins in? They said, Yeah. That person went back there and got the pins out of that dog and destroyed that dog and all of that noise in the house stopped. You know. You know, the devil sometimes he had to think you got a, a gang of rats running through that thing. You might do if you got a rat, get rid of rat. Horse them dead, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, my wife, got, she will not got to tell me. <laughs> and I'll drop in and sing. And I know better because I was raised up right now. If you go to my mom's house right now, they need some dish water in there because she made sure me and my dad learn how to. <laughs> just probably got dish water right now. Yeah. I'm a little, 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 right? I'm a little. Always. Always. Because I know better, so I just take advantage of what I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I want you to all the rain feather. <laughs> she go in there by one or two in the morning, you hear clang, clang, clang. I said, there go my seat. <laughs> my fault. <laughs> Tell the truth, Shane. Whoever gets that free. <laughs> Wake you up. It's my fault. It's all my business. <laughs> Y'all see I'm sweating to tell the truth. I'm just like it. Because I need to be telling the truth all the time. Don't get me wrong. It's not our fault. It's my fault. I know better. Oh, we don't, we don't want to leave out uh, uh, these seven African powers. This is a very nasty one, people. Uh, this portrait may, uh, many Christians have in their homes. I'm serious, too. I've seen this portrait or this picture in several places. Uh, I think most recently in Houston, I was at a, at a bookstore, at an antique bookstore. Uh, I've seen them in homes. I've seen them in thrift and resale stores. They just be like in a frame, and they just laying up there for somebody that practices this stuff, or somebody that thinks it's cute because they go Jesus in the building and Mary, the Queen of Heaven, right there. They don't call her the Queen of Heaven. They just see Mary, and they bring it into the house. I've seen this time after time after time, people. And we as Christians should not have this junk. It shows in its center a picture of a cross with a man represent, representing Jesus. Or Jesus is going to come off the cross. All right. And this portrait has pictures surrounding it. There's cross pictures. Some of them are Catholic saints, and other ones are, are, are not. And uh, at the top of this portrait is the picture of a woman with a crown on her head. And the only person that we're supposed to be casting our crowns to is who? Jesus. All right. So they're showing that the crown here is on, on her head, and it's representing Mary, the Queen of Heaven. Not in the Word, people. Not in the Word. And God warns us in, in Deuteronomy, uh, we need to get this stuff out of our house if we got it, because it looks pretty good. Looks pretty. Looks like an antique something. It might be worth some money one night, one day. And uh, the only problem is when, you, when you're gonna get paid for the wages of sin. To have this kind of stuff, the wages of sin is is death. So it's the wrong kind of money. And so in Deuteronomy the 18th chapter, God warns us in verse 9: When thou art come into the knowledge of salvation and deliverance, when thou come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those, those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter pass through the fire. Child sacrifice, abortion. Or that uses divination, going to other gods, spirit gods. Or an observer of time, you know, basing everything up on the horoscope, or the almanac, or whatever you call it. And the almanac does have some, some good to it in some areas, it's for those who are farmers. But some people have used it in the wrong context. Uh, the enchanter, 
uh, an enchanter. Uh, uh, it's, it's like uh, 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 when I when I was a uh, an athlete, we really felt good when when they chanted for us. Hey, go, jail, go, he would go, enchanter. It's amazing how all the Christians want to be cheerleaders, and uh, all they want to dance with the old man over at the what they call that thing every year at the ball down here at the waterfront. What they call that? The nature's river feels so good. Over the years I've studied this thing, most of the Christian people just get called to dance with the old Peter Piper man, the old man. The dance with the old man, nature's. But anyway, all right, that's another, you get to go Google that. Google! Be careful what you Google. Because yeah. I can read stuff, I was reading the other day, I was Googling something, I read, I say, Church of Christ, see it clear, clear. Or Jehovah's Witness, they thought they had me. I can say, I said, well, I'm one of the people that can't read this, they don't understand what they see. But anyway. And so God wants us here in Deuteronomy here, uh, or a witch, or a charmer, and a charmer is used by the uh, Haba Haba demons in uh, Santeria, and in uh, Voodoo, uh, the charm people, uh, luck, to send lust uh, 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 spirits and, and, and love portions. I call them love, lust portions, but love portions to cause somebody to, to want you. Uh, and and uh, pictures, very dangerous artifact of yourself. In other words, especially young people, and we, we live in a very photo world uh, with our uh, gadgets, our phones and stuff, and people, y'all already saw what's going on right now with the uh, uh, nudity things, and there's other names for that. I'm just not familiar with it. Uh, that's, that's many children have been deceived by. I'm not faulting the children, okay? Huh? Sexting. Sexting, yeah. So I'm not really even faulting children, because I remember when I was young and naive and Stupid, just you know, we just fell with the you know, went with the trend, and that's a lack of teaching in the church, lack of teaching in the home. So we're not lacking here. We're going to cover these things, okay? Mm -hmm. And so, and so, and I remember the gullibility of what it like to feel like when I was 11 or 12, 13. I didn't know all these things. I didn't know when I was going to church that the guy that picked me up was a homosexual and played the piano. I didn't know that. Mama told me I could ride church with So yeah, I didn't know all these differences, right? Until somebody do this. Hey, hey. <laughs> 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 Uh, that didn't happen, I don't remember. If it did, he must have put some stuff in me. But anyway, so you have to be careful. Come on, tell the truth, shame, them, get set free. So they got people that use this stuff here. So you got to watch that charmer spirit. Charmer don't mean just charming like a snake. Charm, y'all know what I'm talking about. Baby, baby, baby. Y'all remember Barry White? You remember Big and Barry White? Y'all were listening to me? Baby, 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 baby. I love you, baby. Okay, so they got people. <laughs> they got people that charm you. Yes. So y'all know about charm when you're dating, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, those of y'all that dated got married, I, I mean, you know. You have to be very careful with that, you know. You have to know that God's placed you together, and you have to know how to uh, uh, communicate and talk, and Jesus should be at the center of your attention, and when he gave you the union of the marriage, uh, not, nothing more greater on this side of, of the Jordan, not, it's not Jordan, not on this side of heaven, uh, than the relationship between the uh, husband and his wife, and in the communion and the fellowship of God. That's, this is, nothing can take the place of that. Everything else is nasty, thank you, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> he took it away from me, I gave it up. <laughs> All right, so you, so you, you know, nothing else feels good until you know you're cleansed by God and you're walking in His cleansedness. So God tells us that uh, all consult of uh, with familiar spirits, and that's what they're dealing with the Orisha, uh, wizards or necromancers, mean worshiping the dead. And you know the Catholics deal with the dead, right? We call them on Saint Peter. Saint Peter, come show, show goodness today, show goodness to your people today. All right, just be honest about this thing. The Voodoo people do it too. Uh, they call upon the ancestors of God. They call them by a different name because they're from Nigeria. They didn't merge those particular names with the westernized names yet. Or have them, all right? So you have to know all these things to do. And all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord because of these abominations the Lord thy God do drive them from out before thee. And he'll drive them out of us too if we'll let him. Well, God's word warns every believer not to mess with this stuff. Uh, and so we've read that in Exodus, the 20th chapter, where God says, Thou shalt have no other gods. These beads, dolls, uh, pictures, uh, and much more are an abomination to God. And it's an abomination to the God of the Bible. The Bible is very explicit on how uh, God feels about the practice of the occult. And a lot of this stuff has been made popular in these last days and heavily promoted by television, television shows, uh, by late night talk shows that talk about magic. The aliens are coming. There's a government conspiracy at 9 o'clock. You can listen to that. 
and the voice sounds like this is never change, never go, hi, how are you? It just stays the same, but he's hooking you in there, he's charming you. He's charming, <laughs> next thing you know, you're ready to kick the prison out the office. I'm just tell you like it is, they're charming you. All right, late night talk shows and stuff. You gotta get into the word. You gotta love the word. Love God's word, people. This stuff is happening out there. Uh, it's been made popular by musicians and their music, such as Santana, and others who clearly worship the original. They make it clear to you that they worship the original. And people like that, they, 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 that old man, they, uh, uh, beat. They like the beat of the, uh, the uh, beat of the bimbi, the beat of the uh, uh, Orishas. And that's what they like about uh, the Santana music. Santana from his very, and, uh, very beginning, the six, uh, it's, it's ni 1960s at Woodstock. And Sly and the Family Stone. Uh, I didn't be Santana, but I made Sly them people. Because I was a musician. I, I was doing the San, 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 San Diego, California. So we had lots of concerts in San Diego and Los Angeles. I, and uh, the uh, so a lot of this stuff been going on in our country in our country for years, and now it's out of the closet. God has not changed His mind about the matter. He has not changed His mind. He wants us free from this mess. You participated in this stuff, or you received various Santeria, uh, sent, uh, 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 Santeria various gods or artifacts, then you'll come under that curse. In fact, it's a, a four generational curse that. Uh, person that has these items, or if you've ever participated willfully in Santa Maria and you were ignorant you're doing it, then you were, you were cursed, you were church, your children were cursed, grandchildren were cursed, great-grandchildren were cursed. All right, so I've been around, involved in the Santa Maria religion uh, uh, for some time because I was aware of it uh, as a person before I became a Christian, but I just didn't touch it. I knew, I knew about voodoo, I just didn't touch it. You know, if you're going to be on the streets and you're living with all kinds of stuff, you got to know something. All right, and uh, but a lot of the people that uh, uh, you do a study on uh, drug cartels, uh, I think I mentioned something in the book on Orisha about um, uh, Norega and his drug addiction. Hitler had a drug addiction. Well, all these people that seem to be Satan, Satan, the embodiment of Satan for an hour or so, because Satan can only be one place at one time, but his demons are everywhere. So why all these people just appear to be the embodiment of Satan in their last hours before their death are all drug addicts? So the drug scene ain't got nothing to do with you getting high. He just, he just want them barn doors to open up, your mind be open, that all come in and look, that food wide open, high as a cat, they don't know what's happening, come on in. Come on in, y'all, come on in, they high as a cat. That's what the drug scene is really about. All right, and so, if you've been involved in Santa Real religion, or the occult, or perhaps your family was, you can change the direction, even for your family today, and yourself, and find forgiveness, healing, and deliverance through Jesus Christ. If you choose to continue, then God's word says in Revelation, the 21st chapter, verse 8, and this is a warning to those of you that want to continue this, but the fearful, the unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burned with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. God's word is talking about hell. And hell, unfortunately, is enlarging itself. God created it at a certain width. There were fallen angels and Satan, and man rebellion has caused an enlargement of it. And we want to stop enlarging. We want to see people get saved. Amen. And that's God's heart. God's heart is for everyone to be saved. If you have ever come in contact with anyone, dated anyone that was uh, of uh, African, Nigerian background, or uh, Hispanic, uh, and uh, uh, or was tight with, uh, uh, with somebody or growing up, just to be on the safe side, I would suggest you go through the prayer book. Uh, maybe God would bring something to you to remember. You know, I had uh, some, some the most, most horrible relationship I ever remember in my entire life, which I don't feel anything down, I don't have anything, I just remember, was a Puerto Rican. All right, and so, and, I mean, they could cuss you out and you could fit it. I remember that, but I don't remember anything now. I don't feel anything now, but I just remember that because, you know, all my life I broke all of those relationships. But that was one that stood out the most. And I, I, mean, I, I mean, you know, let's face it. I mean, I was on the world for 30 some years before God came in there. So I had plenty of time to, to really do a lot of damage to a lot of hurt, hurt a lot of people. But I ain't talking about blaming them. It's me. You know, they ain't talking about, and the man did this, and the woman did that. No, me. I did. Nobody else did. Nothing to me, I didn't allow them to do to me. I'm going to put the blame where it was so the cross will work fully for you. Amen. 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 Now, I mean that in my whole heart. I mean it. I will never pass the book. You know, that's the problem with mamas and dads. We want to pass the book when our children get in trouble. Just sit them down and tell them the truth. 
Okay, I'm going to heaven. When they start fishing in line, not going to heaven. You would be scared to say that. My wife tells you, I ain't. <laughs> 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 I mean, everything I got belongs to our children. I don't pull out a dime if you're going to lie. Yeah, I'm going to just be honest. Be candid with me. Straight. I'm back here 100%. I don't care if you're wrong. Amen. Just be straight with me. I had one of my children, I think, but she was, uh, this was before I was saved or I had a child. And I think we were, uh, she came by the house, she was high, but she was not calm, you know, if people say kind of high, you can be calm and stuff. And I picked it up and I said, I said, come on, I'm going to take you shopping, we'll go get you the shoes. Oh, Dad, right, this is about 10 or 15 years ago. I said, uh, so and so, I said, you high? <laughs> she said, yeah, Dad. She said, yeah, Dad, I am. I said, okay, well, after that, I'm going to get her something to eat and we'll take you back home. Okay, Dad. Just be straight! That's right. Just be straight! That's right. Just be straight. That's, sometimes that's all they can know until they can come to the, to the Christian faith. Is that stableness in your life and not being able to respond to them and accept them who they are. Not be happy about it, but there's a relationship in that father daughter or uh, father uh, son relationship that needs to be established. Right. So they can see the picture of God being that kind of God, forgiving, long suffering, patient with you. Okay. Uh, you can cut them off. Get them! the buck stops you. I don't kick them out. I just take the key. You can't get in. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're not going to talk about parental guidance today. <laughs> we'll get away from the subject. <laughs> All right. You're always welcome, but now you got to. Okay, but anyway. Yeah. All right. So, those of you who want to pray with me, and, and, and let's get some of this junk off of it, because I know <laughs> this stuff is on me. Uh, will you join me in prayer? Repeat after me. Father God, Father God I, believe I believe that Jesus Christ. Is your, is your son, and that Jesus, and that Jesus died, for my sins. died for my sins, and he rose from the dead, from the dead on the third day, on the third day and, sits on the right hand of the and sits on the right hand of the Father. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is, my priest, is my high priest, is my great high priest. Is my great high priest. He, alone he alone is the King of kings, the king and, of kings Lord of Lords. and Lord of Lords. I confess, I confess the sins of my ancestors. And I, confess, and I confess my own sins, my own sins are being involved, being involved in witchcraft, witchcraft Santeria, 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 Voodoo, Voodoo, Voodoo any demonic practices, practice, whether I was aware, I was aware or, not aware, or not aware. I confess it as sin. In, in Jesus' name. I ask you to forgive me, you to forgive me for, my for my sins and the sins of my ancestors. As a, As a believer, in Jesus' name, in Jesus name I, reject I reject Satan and all his powers. And all his powers. I, reject I reject Santeria, Voodoo, Voodoo. All, witchcraft. all witchcraft. I reject tarot card readings that were done over my life, over my life. Awares, awares or unawares, or unawares. by the ancestors, by the awares, awares or unawares, unawares that were, that were affecting my life. I reject tarot card readings. I reject, tarot card readings. I reject everything, I reject everything that, I've that I've done or my ancestors have done, have done that has not been pleased to you. As a believer, with power, with power over the devil, over the devil Satan, Satan, I want no part of you or no your works. Jesus has washed me, Jesus has washed me in, his in His precious blood, and I belong to Jesus Christ, and I belong to Jesus Christ my, Redeemer, my Redeemer, my Savior, my Savior in, whom I trust. in whom I trust. I pray, I pray in, Jesus name, in Jesus' name to break all curses, break all curses because, of the of the because of the sins of the fathers or my own acts my own that brought curses upon my life. I break those curses in Jesus' name. I break all ancestral curses, all family curses, all direct spoken word curses that have come against me and my descendants in Jesus' name. I break them, I break them, I break them in Jesus' name. And I command all the demons that were assigned to carry out these curses Go in, Go in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus. All demonic spirits, assignments, are canceled by the word of God. 
by the blood of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the believer's commission. In Jesus' name, the curses are broken, and all the demons are assigned to carry it out. The assignments are broken now. In Jesus' name. Now, one of the things as we continue on in prayer, one of the things I want to remind you and remind those that will uh, have privilege to the teaching, you need to clean your house. You need to go and ask the Holy Spirit because the devil's careful and he spent many, many months or weeks or years, if you have an item somewhere, carefully causing you to forget where you put it. If, if there is such an item, I do not know. Only God knows. And so you have to remove everything from your home. If you want a book about Santa Maria, find one from a Christian who used to be a Santa Maria witch. If you want a book about the Mo uh, uh, Muslims or Jehovah's Witness, find a book that is written by a Christian who wrote against it. You don't need to have that original material in the house. If you sharp it up and you was part of that, if you was part of cults in different religions, then you ought to be able to expound it, uh, uh, verbally from your heart because you know where the error of your life what God says you forget. Get the junk out of your house. It draws demons. And so that means you've got to get rid of all of your elikas, or elikis, or elikas, that's also spelled E-L-I-K-S, as well as elikis. You have to get rid of all of my diamond dolls, uh, any clothes used for rituals, any books, any the santos. You've got to get rid of the santos, the pictures of the santos. Bad demon. You don't want the santos to come in the house. All records uh, that you have, especially records that uh, worship the Orisha. Uh, anything sewn into pillars or dolls, you got to pay attention to that. You, you, you watch those dolls period anyway. I know they got nice little things you can have, but do a study on dolls. It's, it's in the red manual, those who got the red manual, study on dolls. Anything given to you for luck is not luck. Luck is a synonym for the word Lucifer. All right, so it is a, it is not an anonym. It doesn't mean luck, luck or good. All right, luck is exactly what it means. And it is not a work of the Holy Spirit. So you can't say, good luck. <laughs> I might, you might say it to me. I say, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You, gotta, you can't be jerking around. If you don't call me out. No, you're supposed to be the evangelist. You're supposed to be the teacher. Have some peace about yourself. I do a lot of performance up here for so to get you to recognize when you're starting to perform. So you can put your hands down. You know, I used to teach a lot with my hands. I'm sorry, I asked God to help me discipline myself because people that talk with their hands and with their hands all the time, the Bible talks about well, yeah, you started. You figured out yourself. All right. Did you go figure it out? That's good. Get you started in front of what all that means. All right. And so, uh, any item that's given to you by uh, uh, anyone that's in, in the religion of Santa Maria or uh, voodoo, and voodoo is a religion, by the way. It's not just an act, okay? And uh, or any faith that's contrary to the Christian faith is suspect. You know, candles used in prayers, and we talked about that earlier in the teacher. You can go to the neighborhood store and buy the candles. Uh, some of them may have the candles in the house. They say, well, I already burned it up. It's okay. You know, it's just a statue. Oh, it is. All right, so you got to get rid of that stuff out your house. All right. <coughs> incense. And, you know, you, you have to be very careful about incense. There's some really good fragrance candles. Uh, candles are made by people, Christians and non-Christians alike. Just good fragrance candles. But some of it has got, it's got curses on it. And it'll tell you it's to the, uh, to the god of Brahma from India. It'll, it'll be under there. You can just read it. Say, I never thought about it reading it. You know, the others are just, just incidents, you know, just stuff that was made, vanilla and all that. So we're not talking about uh, throw away all your cameras. Unless you put it in a certain place and if anybody passed by, they got to kiss you like a mistletoe, you know, like at Christmas. Next to all the balls are falling. Tis the season to be broke. So anyway, the mistletoe, <laughs> you know, pass by that, we're like, right. well, I mean, you made that count to one of them, you done made an altar. And that's forbidden by scripture. So, you know. I don't know, some of us need to move our camera like we need to move our seats. Uh, no laughing now. Right. And so we got any plates you got. You got to look on the plates. I, I like I like stoneware, silverware. I mean, I mean really up there. I don't want two hundred, four hundred, a thousand dollars. I like really nice stuff. You got to be careful what's carved in on it. You know, you can't have it just because it's worth a lot. It's good. You know, I got some antique stuff going back to 1903 or something like that. And to make sure it ain't got nothing there, then it's contrary. I don't care how good it is, it's got to go. All right? So, and that's not, you know what I mean? My wife knows, she said, this thing worth it. It's worth this. I said, what's about? I said, well, I told you, for the children, right? I'm giving them, passing it down. They hold another 100 years to be worth it a quarter of All right? Not for me. I'm just glad I was able to afford it. And I could use it too, I just don't use it. All right? So, um, all right, then that Soporos de Santo. 
these are the oh, oh these are the soup bowls. Special bowls are to the gods. All right, to the to Santeria gods. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's called a uh, Soporos de Santo soup bowl. Got to get rid of it, people. You, can, you can't just throw it in the garbage can because a cat will come in and bite it and walk into your neighbor's house and then they'll get sick. And then when you're over there doing your prayer and praising the Lord and believing for them to get healed, you look over there and see that bowl and you say, oh God, we got to break it. Then, then your prayer's going to be shattered then because you know you were responsible but you didn't break it. Now that's what you find in the neighbor's house 20 years later and they sit. All right, this stuff ain't nothing to play with. Statues, get rid of the statues. I don't know if any statues, some people, you know, they got different kinds of statues. You, know, you got 12 men up there, you think that's Jesus. That's your business. You want that, that's your business. I don't need any confusion up there if I turn around and look at each other. But anyway, so you, whatever you feel led to do, you may not feel led to do what I, what I have done in my house. I'm not saying that the, the picture of the Lord's Supper up there or like they will do anything to you, but if you're gonna if you're gonna have it up there, make uh, don't tell me it's a black Jesus and all that kind of thing. I won't hear that. <laughs> no, I just I'm just trying to tell the truth, trying to help somebody. I'm trying to get get these these whatever this is in us. It's, you know, we gotta get that all out of us and just become Christian. Amen. Christ like. Uh, then lastly, uh, those of you that get in the video, uh, you gotta get some Christians, some, some friends. If you're a part of a church, which you should, I shouldn't even have to use the word if. Uh, uh, you're part of a church, then you should go to your pastor's house and discover by the Holy Spirit that these things were inappropriate. Would you schedule time to come and bless my house? If they say, okay, I'll get back in a week. Well, I need it right now. I need it. Have faith in God. <laughs> Have faith in God. Amen. I mean, everybody wants things done yesterday. You know, yesterday. So you need to have your homes uh, anointed with all and, and bless your home. I mean, I have to admit, some, some religions got this thing pretty much down pat. They go in there and bless them homes. Y'all know, y'all see them. And so, but, but, <laughs> but we won't even do it. I, you know, we won't even do it, you know. And so, but anyway, um, uh, God wants his people to deliver. Just a couple more prayers. Yeah. This, this teaching also is in written form, so it can be downloaded and sent to anybody. Uh, repeat after me. We're going to break the soul ties because somebody might have placed a lower portion when you was 14 years old. You just think uh, witchcraft didn't show up until you became saved. <laughs> Some of us think that, really. You know, and uh, so in Jesus' name, Jesus name, I renounce all ungodly soul ties <laughs> that worship the Santeria gods, the voodoo gods, the Orishas, the musical artists, their songs, television singers, performers, teachers, bands, drummings, choir, rap artists, hip, art, hip hop, rock artists, eight tracks, cassettes, CDs, and all methods that Satan has tried to release. Demons into my soul through music, songs, beating of the drums, uh, television singers, all those that I've called and others that I'm not aware of. I pray and break those soul ties today in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, to send the angels to go out and bring back to me anywhere. Anywhere. Well, my soul was fragmented. Soul was fragmented. Bring, back Bring back to me the fragments of my soul, of my soul and, my spirit. and my spirit. I'm talking about the human spirit. And I'm praying God, I'm praying send, God. Back send back to them what are known or unknown, or unknown. the fragments of their souls of their and their spirit. And, their spirit. and in Jesus' name, in Jesus I exchange name. all of their images for the image of the cross. I break those soul ties in Jesus' name. Soul ties are broken. In Jesus' name. Now see, that covers way back when we were children, uh, whether it be family members or at school, uh, somebody read a book on Santa Maria or whatever, and they decided to try to see if they can win you over and it became your girlfriend, your boyfriend, or best friend, or whatever the case might be. Uh, I heard a Mexican guy, I stole some stuff from him when I was a young child. And uh, I know he was upset, but he never told me that because I was a child. And, uh, and so I had to go back and deal with that and things like that. But, you know, you have to go back and allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to you things that you've done and, and get healing. Amen.
I, and I have no, no feeling whatsoever about that anymore. I dealt with it appropriately, okay? The, um, we want to deal with the occult curses right now. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name I, bind man, I bind the strong man of sin and death, sin death, and death, death and destruction, death and, death and hell, death and hell over, all over all curses inflicted upon me. Inflicted upon me. I bind the power of the Santeria curse. I bind the power of all voodoo curses. I bind the power of all witchcraft curses. I now cut, sever and loose myself from all evil curses, all buried curses, all charms, hexes, vexes, spells, jinxes, all psychic powers. Psychic. Our like manipulative prayers, are manipulative prayers. prayers amiss, prayers bewitchment, bewitchment. Witchcraft, witchcraft, sorcery, sorcery. Enchantments, enchantments, incantations. incantations. So we do. We pray in the word. All right. Voodoo, 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 voodoo jujus, 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 white, white black, black, and yellow magic. And yellow magic. Makumba, Makumba, Santeria, Santeria Santo, Spirit. Santo Spirit. I command you to manifest and go. In Jesus' name. All of the Eurisha, curses, Palamante, the mischief, covenants, cautions, and all omens. I cancel all mind control, occult mind control, witchcraft control, soul power, and all human spirits, and their familiar spirits affecting my life today. Familiar spirits and human spirits sometimes remain with people and it causes them to go back to things that they don't want to do. They, after they get involved in it, they like doing it, they just get cold. All right? But they don't know what's drawing them back. All right? Because the blame is always on the person. They never go and deal with it like the word says, it's the devil. We wrestle not with flesh and blood. All right, so I'm not talking about the person using the stuff. They might have done that 20 years ago, but the curse still lives in you. And it draws you back to go back into a sin lifestyle. Break, this is the final one, breaking the, the generational curse. Dear Lord, Dear Lord I, believe I believe in the whole of Scripture and the whole of God's revealed will and, and all that is sacrificed provided, all that is, provided. All that is high priesthood covers. I confess that my redemption is complete and that Satan's dominion over me is Surrendered. Is, is, is over. Is, is ended. Is ended. Today, Today, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. I, rebuke I rebuke and renounce him. And renounce him. He's, a He's a liar and a false god. And a false god. I, forsake I forsake all allegiance to him. I worship the Lord. I worship the Lord. My God, My and, him and him only shall I serve. Shall I serve. Will, I serve. Will I serve. I have already confessed. I've repented of my sins, and I've asked God to forgive me. Now, Lord, according to Leviticus 26.40, I confess and repent and ask for, the, uh, for, for forgiveness for the, from the sins, uh, for the sins of my forefathers. I ask you, God, to forgive them and to break all generational curses by the power of the blood in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name and by his blood, I now take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and I go back to Adam and Eve on both sides, my mother and father's sides, of my family, and I cut, sever and loose myself, my seed, all future seed all future from this evil, from this in, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Now just agree with me just for a minute. I'm just going to come against a few things. In the name of Jesus Christ, I come against all of the, the spirits of the Holocaust. I command you to leave us in Jesus' name. The spirits of the Madamas, I break those curses and command you to leave us. All curses that have come in, in clothes, uh, that have been bought or were given to us in rituals that were done against us, or we might have participated in any books, the pictures of the Santos, uh, records, uh, musicians, anything that was sold in the pillars of dolls that we had in our possession or in our family possession we used for luck. I command those spirits to leave us. Uh, anyone that gave us any religious items that we held onto, the sacred, I command
command those spirits to leave us, to break the powers of the curses from the candles and the, and the incense and the intercession and false prayers. Command those spirits to leave us, the demons that are on the plates, uh, the sober de santo, soup bowls. Command all those to go and all of the statues uh, to, to leave us in Jesus' name. Uh, come against all love potions and break those curses over our lives. Command the love potion curses to go and not able to work. Also, the shield of faith against the fiery darts of the wicked. So as our children are going through their school and they're learning and they're developing, learning about the things of God, uh, Father, we just thank you right now for the shield against those love potion curses, uh, manipulated prayers coming against them. Uh, we come against all of the original gods that were, were spoken of in today's teaching, all that we know about. We break all of their powers, Shango, Ogon, Ifa, and many others that were not even discussed in today's session. Uh, we're breaking all of those uh, uh, powers of those dark, all those African hidden, hidden gods. We're breaking those curses over us in Jesus' name. Now, Father, in Jesus' name, I bind up all the spirits in, in every area where we discussed in today's uh, teaching. I command them all to leave us now in Jesus' name. Many others would not name, but they all come under, uh, under Jesus Christ, our great high priest, and under him. All the powers of darkness have to surrender. They have to bow their knees. So it's all everything in Santeria and the hoodoo and witchcraft. We command them all to go. Leave us in Jesus' name. So I ask you, Lord, to, to fill up the vacancies and the voids in our minds and our bodies where those evil spirits are leaving and have left with the Holy Spirit and, and continue to do so. I pray, Father, until they all go. I ask you, Lord, to put and pour your healing power uh, down over all areas of our minds, our bodies that have been ravaged, tormented, harmed, and wounded in any way cleanse and heal these areas with your precious blood. I ask, Lord, that you would assign as many of your ministering angels need, needed to protect each person here, the group, our families, and to all of the deliverance, healing, and the infill of the Holy Spirit is completed by you, Father. Now, Lord, I ask you to give every person and their families the discernment and the needs to make and to keep them aware of each time the enemy is trying to gain access to gifts, through various witchcraft or, uh, items and so forth like this, so they can be stopped and before the devil can get a foothold in our life again. Lord, I pray that you will just uh, fill us, uh, fill us, the group here, Father, with the, with the uh, uh, fruit of the Spirit, uh, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, uh, meekness, and temperance, against us that has no mind. Lord, we just trust in you. Amen? Amen. Day of our Lord, uh, April the 8th, Year of the Lord, 2018. Santa Rio. False doctrine. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we all stand. Thank you, Pastor Jim, for that teaching today. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you for us being in assembly, assembly together today. Amen. We thank you for another Sunday, Lord, that we can worship you and praise you and glorify you and magnify you and come together as a family. We want to thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, for the many blessings that you're bestowing upon us, for the forgiveness that went forth today in the name of Jesus, and let us continue to search our hearts for any other, other unforgiveness that we might have for others and to be able to go to them and, yes. and ask them forgiveness. We also, Father, want to thank you for blessing us to be able to make a safe trip home. Yes, Lord. We ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you cover our, our vehicles with the blood of Jesus yes. and, and even send the uh, angels to be with us, Lord, the warring angels and ministering angels to be with us as we travel up and down the dangerous highways, byways, feed roads, street roads. We just thank you right now. And Lord, we just pray and believe, Father, in the name of Jesus, that we'll all meet together again on next Sunday and bless you and praise you again as a family in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.